Hello, everyone. Welcome to your weekend edition of Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general reading, energy reading for your weekend of Friday, October 11th through Sunday, October 13th, 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, this reading is going to be a little bit more of a specific reading because uh, we do have a full moon this weekend um, over the 12th and the 13th, to be quite honest. Uh, according to um, a website that I checked just, you know, just to confirm whether or not we had a, a, a full moon this weekend, um, <clears throat> it, it, the, the, according to that chart, which I don't even remember what site it was. Hold on, let me see if I can. It was uh, calendar 12, calendar-12.com. Um, I just did a quick full moon October 2019 Google search or actually on this on this system I have Ecosia. Have you guys ever heard of Ecosia? It's a it's a, a, a search engine E C O S I E A. It's a search engine that plants trees apparently so they say plants trees for every search that is searched through their engine. Um, I've been using it for a few years now at least on this one system. Um, and back in the day when I when I checked it out at first, it seemed pretty cool. Um, and so I've just I've been using it ever since. But I have com forgotten to put it on all of my systems, but on this one. So I did a quick Ecosia search, which I believe works through Google too. Um, but I just put in full moon October 2019, um, and <clears throat> it came up with I found this uh, calendar-12.com, and it told and that that's that um, that calendar said that the visibility on Saturday, the 12th, is going to be 99%, and then on Sunday, it's going to be 100% visible, okay? So I'm taking that as we have a full moon all weekend, all right? Um, <clears throat> so with that said, um, I did pull some of the, I have some pre-shuffle energies here, and it looks like we're going to be talking about this full moon. I'll get into it in a second, but so that's why this is going to be a little bit more of a specific reading, okay? Normally, these readings would be timeless but we're dealing with we're talking about this full moon phase over the weekend so that's not so timeless um but it really could affect you it could be in effect for I, i'm feeling like a good like two weeks after the actual event okay so maybe it isn't all as timeless as i'm making it out to be who knows take it as it resonates for you um I am definitely feeling a lot better today. It's not that I was feeling bad yesterday. Um, as you know, we had the 1010 portal yesterday. It's not that I was feeling bad, although I did have, I was experiencing periodic migraines. They were coming in waves. Um, I really didn't eat much yesterday. I had, I ended up not really eating breakfast, but then um, I got an ins inspiration to go out and, and get some things done. So I went out and I had a smoothie and then I ended up having like a pretty heavy lunch. And then that was it. That was all that I ate for the rest of the day. Um, and... I had the I had coffee in the morning, obviously. Every morning I have coffee, but um, it it kind of felt like it was I was experiencing migraines because the coffee I was drinking was helping relieve the pain, but it wasn't major. Okay, it was minor, um, and I just I, I didn't feel bad. I woke up feeling great. Um, you know, I was excited to get started with my day, um, but I just felt static, like a li like it was almost like I was a little disconnected, but I wasn't really. But no, see, now I was, get, I, 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 you can never be completely be disconnected, okay? But yesterday, for some reason, there was a lull in the connection. It's as if I was slightly disconnected for a little bit. I guess for download purposes, um, um, acclim reacclimation purpose. It, it's almost as if I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't, I'm having trouble putting it into words, but it's like, you know, sh things were shifting around and, you know, parts were being pieced together or something like that. Um, but it was a good day. But then today I got up and I, I got back into my routine, um, you know, yoga, a little bit of yoga, a little bit of stretch, a little bit of meditation before I actually sit down and start channeling for the collective. And as I was doing that, as I was going through that like yoga meditation practice, all of a sudden I became aware, consciously aware of the ringing in my ears again. And normally I do it like I, I, I have constant, just a steady, high pitched ring in my ears constantly all the time. I always have since I was a very young kid. I remember being very young and mentioning it and just 
being consciously aware. It's like, huh, I always hear ringing in my ears. But I mean, I, you know, I was going to doctors all the time, blah, blah, blah. You know, not that, not that my family were hyper, I was in a family of hypochondriacs, but, but you know, we had regular checkups and everything and even school checkups and I would have my ears checked and blah, blah, blah. And everything was fine. Okay. So it's not an issue. So it's just, it's just the, the frequency that I'm picking up on. It's the, it's the, the clear audience that I've naturally had that was naturally fairly strong ever since I was a kid. Um, but today I became consciously aware of it again, which leads me to believe that it wasn't there yesterday. And I wasn't, I didn't really notice it yesterday. I just noticed a, a slight feeling, a, a perception of something that for lack of a better term, I labeled as feeling staticky, right? As if the, 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 the channels weren't lining up on the receiver and radio, like, you know what I mean? Um, and so, so that leads me to believe that today I'm connected again. You know, the mission accomplished. We, yesterday we accomplished what we needed and today we're back in. Um, I also feel like that, that what, what was going on yesterday, even some of my friends that, some of my super sensitive friends just like me, you know, we're, we're going through it yesterday. We were talking about it. Um, so we're back in. All right. So cool. I, I, that, I, I, I feel like normally that would be an unsettling thing, but to me it was just a matter of, huh, okay, well, I guess we're doing something else today. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a thing like, well, for me at least, it wasn't the thing. I know two, some of my other friends were like, <laughs> were like barricading themselves in their, in their homes and not communicating with anybody. I understand, although I've kind of been in that overall energy anyway. <laughs> so, so it wasn't anything new for me. Um, but it wasn't like a doomsday thing. It wasn't like a crazy, at least for me, it wasn't just like this crazy, like, oh my God, I, I can't deal with the world. No, for me, it was just a situation in which, um, downloads were coming in or things were being shifted. There was, there was lots of solar activity, lots of solar energy bombarding, bombarding the planet at that time. At least I was picking up on those waves at that moment. So it wasn't really a thing. All right. And depending on how well you handle these situations as they come up, because they're going to keep coming, guys. This happens <laughs> periodically, all right? Especially during this time of ascension that we're dealing with on the planet. You know, we're getting a lot of, our, our planet is being bombarded with a lot of new energy, a lot of strong waves of energy that are helping to, that are, thank you, Spirit, that are helping Gaia to go through her shift. Because it's Gaia's will to move back from three-dimensional reality back to fifth dimensional reality which is her home which is her natural state of being so as we do that we the the the, the, the frequency the vibration of the planet needs to change needs to elevate needs to go higher right and so we're getting a lot of that energy hitting the planet uh, especially from sirius which is like a central sun of the milky way i believe it is um, so we're getting a lot of that energy and so it's going to come in waves. So the more that you, the, the better you have, the better time you have of handling these energies, um, and you will notice this over time, th that is an indication of how strong you're becoming, how energetically strong you're becoming. And that is, in, 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 I want to say, for those of you that think that, um, you know, as you're getting better, you're not, you're not getting more and more sensitive. It's backwards. You're getting better at this, but you are getting more and more and more increasingly sensitive. As you, as you move up the vibrational scale, you do increase in your sensitivity. But I'm saying that to say that increasing in an increase in your sensitivity is not a bad thing. It's actually a very good thing. It's actually ideal. It is what we want in this situation, okay? So yes, that is going to mean that your diet is going to change, your habits are going to change, your family is going, to, well, yes, the people that you, uh, the people that you spend your time with, okay? Your social circle is going to change, your career is going to change, your, your, your body is going to change, your mind is, everything is going to change, all right? So there is going to be an adjustment. To the ego, that could be, disconcerting however it's a good thing okay i felt compelled to say that so let's get into the pre-shuffle energies here you have the two and, and, it, and it's funny because i almost didn't pull a pre-shuffle energy today um 
it, it just it just didn't seem like it was coming through. But then this fell out. Two of Wands. All right. Now, we do have a full moon coming, right? It's over the weekend. And we are going to be talking about the full moon. And I'm going to tell you why specifically in a moment. But when this came out, I was like, hmm, we may be discussing this full moon situation because a full moon is a perfect time for you to do some releasing. Yes. And we've very much been in this energy of trying to decide or working on deciding which direction it is we want to move in now because many of us, especially those of us that are in the, in the part of the collective that I'm channeling for, but outside of that, many, many, many people are really realizing the depths of who they are, which is now starting to shift the trajectory, shift your path, even shift what you want in life, shifting your desires, which is allowing you to make a choice towards going in a new direction. Overall energy of the Five of Cups. Now, the, we have been talking about the Five of Cups a lot this past week, even last week, okay? But finally now, we have this side of the card where the focus is, even though this person is still, you know, looking towards the Three Cups that have spilled, the focus now is on the Two Cups that you still have, okay, that are still standing because with the Five of Cups, this is an energy of all is not lost, plus this flower that is growing behind this person, which is indicative of new life, okay? New life is really starting to grow for you guys here, for all of us, really. All right, and then on the other side of our overall energy is the Queen of Wands, which is representative of Aries energy. This full moon is in Aries, okay? So... This is a very active energy. This is an energy of really, ooh, I heard getting your mind under control. This is an energy of mind control, okay? So in order to do that, you really need to work on handling your emotions. Handling your emotions in this sense does not mean r reining them in and stuffing them down. No, handling your emotions means taking a good hard look at them coming to terms with what they mean for you. What are your emotions showing you? What are your emotions, oh, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. What are your emotions bringing to the forefront for you? What can you understand about your life and how it's been and where you've been going and what you've been doing and what you want to do in relation to what your emotions are showing you right now? Five of Cups, this is the new life represented by this flower here that's growing. This is the new life that is coming from the compost, we'll say, of awful, nasty, icky emotions, right? The Queen of Wands is feminine energy, okay? It's also Aries energy. It's also cardinal energy. Um, I, in my opinion, the Queen of Wands is the physical embodiment of the law of attraction at work because she is the type of energy to shift her vibration in order to allow things to be in the receptive mode to allow the that which she is wishing to to manifest to gravitate towards her what i'm seeing here with this queen of wands being her back to us okay i'm seeing because her back is to us i'm getting an energy of looking within going within taking your time to yourself working through the emotions working on making a decision in how you want to proceed moving forward okay that, that I, I feel like this this full moon in Aries is giving you a boost for the most part giving you a boost and helping you mm, for some of you I feel like this is a springboard to really launch you out of some sort of stagnancy or regret guilt shame drama, I guess we can call it, that you may have been stuck in from the past. Yes, definitely from the past that you may have been stuck in. It's time to make a new decision. Both, you see all backs are turned here between the Two of Wands, the Five of Cups, and also the Queen of Wands. To me, in this situation, that is speaking to um, internal, looking within. Okay, guys? And that's really great. This is a very good energy. This is a very, very good energy. Okay. So, let's reshuffle, 
give this one more, and then we're going to get into the rest of the reading for today. Here we go. Hi, spirit. <laughs> Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our weekend, Friday, October 11th through Sunday, October 13th, and for this full moon in Aries. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're giving this three shuffles here. And then we'll see what we've got for the weekend. For the weekend. Ooh. All right. Weekend edition, Friday, October 11th through Sunday, <clears throat> October 13th. And the full moon in Aries. All right. Here we go, kids. Best messages, please, Spirit. So the color for the collective, actually, that I picked up on today was green. Um, okay, they're saying one more pass. It is green, and to me that is, yes, the heart chakra. But it's also healing. It is a little bit of a pastel green, though. A little bit of a pale green. Um, that nothing else came out. That was it. Okay. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> Overall energy, we have the three of wands, and we have the eight of swords, and it's definitely a good side of the eight of swords, where we see that we are able to break free from what are is whatever is confining us. Now, we have these three cards here. It's in reverse, though. We have the Ace of Cups, we have the Knight of Swords, and we have the Judgment. All in reverse. And then we have the Eight of Wands underneath this. Well, more than that. The Seven of Pentacles, the Five of Swords, and the Eight of Wands. Okay, my attention was being drawn to the Eight of Wands, but... Um, Interesting. Give me a second here. Let me just sit with this because it's, um, I, I'm feeling that there's a blockage here. What was, what was the other side? Oh, that's right. The eight of swords. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. I get it now. All right. So there is a blockage. It's not a bad thing though. It's not a bad thing. And it's okay. It's kind of like a divine timing type situation. Um, it's it's a blockage, yes, but it's like you're just you're waiting. You're waiting to take action on what it is you're being called to do. Judgment here is a wake up call. Ace of Cups is a, a cup, uh, uh, is an energy of love of self. Divine love, unconditional love. I'm getting an energy of following your heart with the Ace of Cups here. And it's the nighttime scene. Interesting. I'm get, uh, please excuse me. I'm I'm working on channeling this and deciphering the messages because I'm getting I'm kind of getting two, two, somewhat different storylines. They may be they may be connected, for you. They may not. You may resonate with one side of the story than the other. Um, the first thing I'm seeing here is romance, but it's mainly because of. You see on this, this, this side of the Ace of Cups here, you see this figure? All right. Um, the thing about this side of the Ace of Cups is 
that it's a nighttime scene, okay? And if someone is trying to come towards you, or if someone is trying to come towards you in this card, um, and it's it talks about not necessarily believing everything that you see right away because everything is not completely clear, okay? That's what this nighttime scene is 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 speaking to. Now, you could have someone that wants to come towards you. Knight of Swords energy. Someone that has potentially gone through an awakening process, judgment, is hearing a call to move in a certain direction, to move towards a certain person. Yeah, this Eight of Wands really wants to come out. Um, it looks like somebody has gotten some sort of inspiration potentially to communicate. And it's almost as if they're waiting, they're here waiting. This actually, actually, I'm getting that this Three of Wands energy is you, the person that they want to communicate with. You've been doing your work, and so now you're in this energy of waiting for the return on your investment, but this is not, this is not an energy of waiting for a specific person to come forward and communicate with you. No, this is you having done your work and staying in your energetic but in your vibration of having an, an ideal partner come forward towards you, okay? Whether it's this person, regardless as to whether it's this person that, you know, you want it to be or whether it's someone completely new or someone you just don't expect it to be, okay? Um, and they probably... <laughs> I'm hearing they probably want to come through with a vengeance here because of this Knight of Swords energy. The Knight of Swords is um, very much a shoot first, ask questions later type of energy. It is fast moving. It can be quite destructive in nature. Um, but the Knight of Swords is also about communication. And especially with this Eight of Wands here, especially with it's the side of the card in which a, light, uh, a lightning has, has struck. And that to me is like, um, um, inspiration. Yes. Divine inspiration. Okay. Um, and you do have a Pegasus here. I just noticed, which I also feel like is a symbol of communication. At least that was, that's intuitive, intuitively what I'm feeling. But then also here, here's the catch though, this eight of swords. What is why there is this blockage here, and it goes, and this goes for both scenarios. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna get into the other scenario in a second, but this Eight of Swords is the reason why Ace of Cups, Knight of Swords, and Judgment is in reverse, or there's some you're experiencing some sort of blockage here, and it and I I, I don't even really want to call it a blockage, even though yes, technically it would be that, but saying that it's a blockage has some sort of negative connotation that I'm feeling that I don't really feel fits here. You're just waiting for the, it's just waiting for the right moment, i.e. waiting for someone to release themselves from some sort of mental prison, some sort of entanglement. Um, this feels very, it feels like it has a lot to do with obligations. It feels very oblig obligatory, as in whatever it is this person is bound by, and yet they're in the process. Oh, okay. They're in the process. Of, this is what, literally what I just heard. They're in the process of slowly but surely waking up judgment, which is allowing them to break free from this mental prison, this confinement. It probably has a lot to do with social norms as to why they, as to why they cannot communicate with you. Okay. Okay. But now let's get into the second scenario. And this might resonate with you also. It might. Um, maybe it won't. Maybe you'll resonate more with this scenario than the first scenario. But this has a lot to do with your life path, with the new direction that you're being guided towards, that you're being called to, okay? The Knight of Swords is indicative of you wanting to just burst out of the gate and just run like hell. It's an energy of... Actually, you might be preparing for an energy of being able to hit the ground running. That's kind of what I'm seeing with this Knight of Swords energy. Um, I'm also <laughs> I'm also getting an image of um, 
uh, horse racing um, when they come out of the gate, but like busting out of the gate like a freaking bat out of hell, like like just lightning speed, okay? Um, I feel like you're gearing up towards this. I feel like you're, you're, you're developing momentum here, which is also indicative of this Three of Wands energy. That would be, uh, the Three of Wands is a card of waiting for a return on an investment, yes, but it also is, um, in my opinion, it is building momentum as to what choice you have made as building momentum in an effort to honor the choice that you have made in the t the previous step, which was the Two of Wands, which came out in our pre-shuffle energy, all right? This Eight of Wands here is indicative of the spark of um, inspiration, okay? This is another, this Eight of Wands is another fast-moving energy. You can see this as a Sagittarian energy. The Eight of Wands is indicative of the, um, the Archer, okay? And so with the Eight of Wands, you could see as, you could see this as someone that is aiming their arrow to hit that bullseye, okay? On the other side here, with your overall energy, you do have this Eight of Swords. Oh, wow, two eights. I just realized that. Abundance. Abundant energy, that's a very good thing. But here with this Eight of Swords, you are breaking free of the chains. You could see this Eight of Swords as the gate that's holding you and your horse back. And once that gate opens, you're just gonna like burst out like a supernova, you know what I mean? The Ace of Cups here is representing your heart's desire, is representing the direction that you wanna move in that you're being called towards. It's a nighttime scene because you're still a little bit in the dark here. As you work yourself out of this Eight of Swords energy, okay, this heart's desire with the Ace of Cups is becoming clearer and clearer and clearer. But right now, <clears throat> it's like you're waiting for your time to strike. But you're not idly waiting. I don't feel like that. In some cases or in some circumstances, sure, you might need to just sit around and daydream for a little bit, but you're still preparing consciously, okay? So let's move forward. I wanna start some clarity here and I wanna get a little bit of a clearer understanding of these energies. And then we'll get Spirit's Take and then we'll close the reading with our oracle guidance, yes? I'm sorry about the lighting, guys. It's um, it's the sunlight here. It's making my laptop, which, which I'm recording this on, it makes, it's, it's like the shading is going back and forth. Hopefully you guys can see well enough. Um, but that's literally just an ooh, effect of the sun. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. We have got some flyers, y'all. Keep what reversed? Eight of Cups. Okay. Eight of Cups is reversed. Six of Pentacles and the Sun. Again, more blockage. Um, but this is not a bad thing. Because there's illumination. Okay. So what you're working on right now, there is illumination coming into your life in terms of reciprocity with the Six of Pentacles here, all right? The sun is bringing this illumination for you. And thus, it looks like some people are making a choice as to what they need to be walking away from, what they need to be leaving behind them. You haven't quite done it just yet. Maybe some of you have, but you haven't fully completed this yet. Maybe you've started to, you know, leave some things behind, but you haven't quite finished it yet eight of cups eight of wands eight of swords three eights okay um <clears throat> so so this eight of cups in reverse is directly related to the eight of swords here in which you are working on breaking free from some sort of mental prison some sort of confinement some sort of chains all right i'm going to put this back in the deck and i'm going to give this a few more shuffles and then we'll get the rest of this clarifying energy. But so far, that's really good, okay? That is really, 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 really good. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna give this two more shuffles here. 
Whoops. Oh, gosh. Eric, get it together. Get it together. Two more shuffles here. And then we'll see what we've got. Just to clarify these energies a little bit more. All right. That was definitely an 8-8 eight, eight, eight moment, guys. Eight of cups, eight of wands, eight of swords. 8-8-8. Eight, eight, eight. That is your manifestation process right there. At least right now, as it looks right now. And that is incredible, masterfully abundant. Just to make that clear. Oh, look, there's the five of cups. Okay, let's see. So getting to this here, let's get a little, more clear, a little clearer energy on what this is for you guys. Let's see. Ooh. All right. Overall energy. Ooh, damn. Okay. The five of swords, which is really interesting. And I guess spirit is wanting me to dive into the rest of this here because the five of swords is also right here. Okay. So you have, you have the three of wands, the seven of pentacles and the five of swords here. And this was all, this all came out because the eight of wands was called, was, was, was getting my attention. And so now we're, because the five of swords is here and it's here, let's talk about this. We have two stacks of cards that have fallen out. This one is the stack that fell here where we see the five of swords. So I believe this is what this is going to be talking about. Three of wands, seven of pentacles, five of swords. So it seems that it's the five of swords energy that you learned quite a great deal from. I really feel like you've come to the point where you're done sabotaging yourself. And sabotaging yourself here feels like doing things that are, no, that are just not in alignment with you, with who you are, with what you want to be doing. It seems with the Seven of Pentacles energy here that you have learned your lesson or you've learned from the contrast here. And now at the Three of Wands energy, you've made a better decision or maybe you're making, no, you've made the decision already because we've, we, we've since progressed from the two of wands to the three of wands, right? You've made a better decision in terms of who you truly are or what it is you want to be doing to move in a direction that is away from this five of swords energy. It's extreme competition for sure, okay? But it's also an energy of giving your power away to people who don't really know what's best for you. To be quite honest, and I'm not trying to throw any shade on anybody, but to be quite honest, only you and your higher self, your inner being, however you want to describe it, know what's actually best for you. No one else in the external world knows. Period. And I'm not trying to throw shade at anybody. It's just how it is. Okay? All right. So with that said, we have yes. Yes. Wow. That's perfect. So with that said, the, the, the clarifiers that come out came out seven of wands, ace of wands, six of swords. You've progressed. You have set boundaries, or you're in the process of setting boundaries, uh, greater, uh, greater boundaries. Um, and, the, and number one, you are influenced in setting these boundaries because you're, you are consciously choosing to move away, six of swords, move away from this destructive energy. You're literally moving from rough waters with the five of swords to calmer waters with the six of swords, okay? And that's what the six of swords represents, moving from rough waters to calmer waters. Um, but also, the defense or the boundaries that you're putting in place here are inspired. Ace of wands. You have this inspiration to move in this new direction, and so you're moving in that direction. And then this Ace of Wands is coming in twofold. And thus, because of the fact that you're moving in this new direction with the Ace of Wands here, you're inspired to put greater boundaries in, in, in place to protect yourself. And as you continue to move forward, you're going to be continue to inspire, continue to be inspired to fortify or readjust these boundaries with the Seven of Wands. That is a really awesome energy, you guys. That's really awesome. So now let's look at this. So this is the first stack that fell out. It's two cards here. It's damn. Damn, y'all. It's the Ten of Cups with the Six of Cups. It looks like some of you are finally getting down to what it is you truly want to be doing. And I, in, in, intuitively, I wanted to put these two cards right here. 
on the Ace of Cups, the Knight of Swords, and Judgment. That is amazing, you guys. And it's this Five of Swords energy, this competition, this backstabbing, the self-sabotage. And I mean self-sabotage in the sense of going against your own heart and going, I mean, this is general, take it as it resonates. But what I'm getting here, at least for the collective in this general reading is, the Five of Swords is representing going along with what society says you need to be doing. Uh, 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 following the trajectory of what society deems acceptable. But that's not you. You are an individual. Each and every one of us are individuals. Each and every one of us are unique. And yes, there are some models, you know, that'll work for some people, but life is not necessarily supposed to be one size fits all. If that were the case, we'd all be the same, right? <laughs> so now, and that's what this Five of Swords is. So now we're moving away, literally. Six of Swords, Seven of Wands, placing better ground, better boundaries in, for our, in place for ourselves. Also representing greater, a better grounding, a better sense of ground. That's excellent. Inspiration, Ace of Wands. We've got a new idea. We're moving in a new direction. We're inspired by something new. And this is something that brings us joy and emotional fulfillment. This is something that speaks to our inner child, speaks to our hearts. It's on, it's, 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 I guess I want to say it's on pause. It's not blocked. It's just on pause as you work your way out of this confinement, eight of swords. All right. My, my, that sure is beautiful, y'all. Excellent. So now, let's get Spirit's take. Ooh, wrong deck. No, Spirit's take. I mean... Yeah, spirit has been kind of talking to us, but I've just been channeling the energies around you guys right now or around us or at least this pocket of the collective to see what's going on here. And so now we're going to get direct advice from spirit from the Golden Universal Tarot, okay? Ooh, CVS is selling Kit Kat snack sizes for $1.99. <laughs> I just got that email. I'm like, what is that? Oh, okay. Yo, check it. I used to love me some Kit Kat, y'all. Ooh. I remember when I was in high school, I went to I went to theater camp. I went to Stage Door Manor. I loved it. That was the one and only sleepaway camp that I actually enjoyed being at. Go figure. I mean, I am an artist, so of course I would love theater camp. <laughs> Anyway, my mom would send me these care packages of these boxes of straight up just nothing but Kit Kat. And I, I was in heaven. She would just send me these, these, these little boxes just full of Kit Kat bars. Oh man, Kit Kat was my absolute favorite. But I am gluten intolerant, so I shouldn't be eating that. <laughs> I'm so sad about it, you guys. Actually, I'm really not anymore. I'm kind of over it, but... I would love, I would love to have a Kit Kat. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> one last shuffle and then we'll get Spirit's take on this. Here we go. Here we go. So, your take on this, Spirit. Please and thank you. Four of Swords. Sage advice. Sage advice, spirit. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Of course it's sage advice. It's, advice. it's spirit. Yeah, 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 whatever. Um, but that is actually, that is very, very perfect. Okay. Knight of Wands. Ooh. All right. Overall energy is the Nine of Wands. Okay. All right. So uh, you're, we're not out of the woods yet. Not out of the woods yet. Um, and that's what the Four of Swords is saying here. The Four of Swords is also giving me an energy of remain patient, okay? Steady as she goes. We have the Two of Swords with Strength and the Knight of Wands. 
The Two of Swords is not bad here. It's just indicating um, indecisiveness. It's 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 um, spirit here is uh, acknowledging the period that we're in right now, in which all is not too clear. Okay, our direction is not all that clear, and there is an energy of wanting to just rush out there okay but both between the knight of swords and the knight of wands now but spirit is saying here we know how passionate you are we know how excited you are we know how exuberant you are feeling towards this right now but you need to stay a little bit calm you need to stay quiet really need to focus on maybe meditating as much as possible because you're right all of the answers or all of the the guidance in terms of how to do this what direction to move in how to execute this it's not all clear right now it's all coming in slowly but surely it's making its way in once you know once you get that adequate information to move to 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 to, to take the next step or to move in the, in the new whatever in the new direction then take it but don't rush this do not rush this process there are still some downloads that are coming through. There's still a bit of a change in perspective that you are needing to assimilate. There are some downloads that I, I just heard. There are some downloads that could have come in through the 1010 portal that you're now in the process of assimilating. And actually, some of those downloads, you may have a glimpse of where it's leading you and you're getting very, very, very excited. You'd want to just like start. You want to take action. But strength here is saying, hold on, hold on. Tame the beast a little bit. We're not quite ready yet. Okay, I'm going to stop there. But this is a good energy, you guys. This is a very, very good energy. Okay, let's get our oracle guidance. And the oracle guidance today is from another, none other than the dragons, or should I say this weekend. Oracle guidance this weekend is for from the dragons. Yeah. Oh, guys, and look, it looks like I have successfully made it through one week of no nails. Well, no, no painted nails. Obviously, I still have nails. Oh, shut up, Eric. <laughs> but hey, it wasn't that bad. I do plan on painting them on Sunday, though. But it's been a nice week. Anyway, <laughs> one last shuffle here. All right, guys, here we go. I want to say really use this full moon to help clear away a lot of the cobwebs. And it's not, it's not even about clearing away the cobwebs or the obstacles or whatnot. This is energetically, maybe even mentally. It's not about clearing those away so that you can rush forward it's mostly it's about clearing everything away so that you have the space to fill it with the new downloads the new knowledge the information the inspiration the planning for your new your new and adventures and endeavors clearing space away for that to settle in okay and then maybe by the new moon you can start to take some new action does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. All right, let's get your Oracle Guidance from the Dragons for our weekend, October 11th through October 13th, and this new, this, excuse me, full moon in Aries. There it is, Green Dragon. Ooh. Helps you tune in to the secrets of nature. Receive answers and guidance from nature. Align with your divine essence. That is beautiful. If you guys can spend some time out in nature this weekend, please, by all means, do that. Apple picking? Who's going apple picking? Oh my God, I want to go apple picking. Actually, this may not be the best weekend for that. Because we, don't we have this nor'easter that's happening here? Well, I'm in the northeast. I'm in New York. Um, and 
we had signs of it on Wednesday, and I was looking at the weather, and it was supposed. To, I thought it was supposed to be affecting us all weekend. And I'm looking outside right now. It is. It is kind of cloudy. We could probably. Okay. Well, it may not be the best weekend for apple picking. It may not be the best weekend to be out in nature. However, depending on where you are in the world, if you can experience nature this weekend, by all means, go ahead and do that because that's really going to help you clear your head. Absolutely, 100%. And even if it is rainy and, and, and nor'eastery, if, if you enjoy that, put on some galoshes, put on a raincoat, and go dance in the rain. Go play in the I mean, that could really... Playing in the rain could really help you clear away blockages obstacles you know it, it could be a ritualistic thing i mean you could even do it in the shower if you wanted but like why not do it out in the rain when it's like natural you know what i mean that that can help you clear away wash away a lot of what may be holding you back and there's a key here on this card so spending time in nature really could be very very important it could be the key that helps you unlock the space that you need to really start moving forward with your plans and endeavors but let's read this now green dragon it's a four a fifth dimensional dragon beautiful okay All answers lie within nature, and every single thing we need on Earth is provided for us in the natural world. Fifth dimensional green dragons touch your psychic centers and help us to tune in to the sacred geometry in the trunks of trees and petals of flowers, the shells of snails, and everywhere in Master Pan's kingdom. These are the keys and codes that bring us in tune with our divine essence. When we are fully aligned with our fifth dimensional blueprint, we are automatically hold, whole and healed. The guidance here says, the nature kingdom is a magical place in which all our answers are held for us. Luminous green dragons help us to read these answers. If you can sit, if you can, sit quietly in nature, call a green dragon and ask for guidance. The response may come to you consciously or unconsciously, so accept that something important has been activated within you, whether you are aware of it or not. You may feel the need to walk somewhere in particular. If so, follow this impulse, for your green dragon will be guiding you. Keep your eyes and ears open, for the answer may come through a tree, bird, insect, animal, or something else entirely. Your green dragon will glide with you, directing you to the answers you need. This calls for deep trust and an understanding that the divine plan is perfect. Drawing this card also suggests that you would benefit by spending more time in the green world. Your green dragon will be with you, so acknowledge it and let it touch you with its wisdom and great knowledge. Expect revelations or healing. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you guys have a fan fantastic weekend and i look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee monday morning yes take care oh and also don't forget monday we have afternoon tea yes in which we are going to be looking into some love specific situations for couples and situationships yes i'm really looking forward to that that was so much fun this past week so we're definitely going to do it again this coming monday okay all right, guys, I love you all so much. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Well, actually, I'll see you tomorrow for the um, feminine and masculine readings. Yeah? Anyway, take care. Mwah! Bye.